Hello everyone and welcome to the first lesson of this course. This lesson is all about how to move your camera. This is what you will see when you open the software. All you need to do to move your camera is to right click and drag to rotate your object around. Then you can click with the middle mouse button to pan the camera to the sides. You can also scroll in and out with your wheel mouse button to zoom in and out. And then lastly, your left click is your action button. So basically when you click, depending on what's selected here, and we'll go through that in later videos, you will do, you will perform actions on the program. Cool. Next, if you look down here to the bottom right, you will see that you have a bunch of buttons here. These are the quick camera operations. So what you can do here is perspective uh, is what we are seeing right now. What perspective means is uh, whenever an object is further away, it appears smaller. And that's what this camera does. It's like a normal camera. Then the free camera will be exactly the same, but the difference is that it will revolve around the camera and not around the object. Notice that when I click perspective, the camera revolves around the objects. And when I click free, it revolves around the camera. Then the orthogonal camera is like an isometric kind of camera, very similar. Uh, the difference is that objects that are further away are just the same size. So we don't have a perspective deformation in this camera. The only difference with the ISO camera is that with the actual isometric camera, you are locked to, uh, to a certain uh, rotation for your camera. So you cannot just rotate it around. You can revolve around your object, but you cannot make your camera higher and lower. You can do it to a certain degree uh, you see you have you have like brackets so you can go straight you can go down 35 degrees or you can go up 36 degrees so next and uh, the next option we have is this button here that is to recenter the camera so it will recenter the camera around the selected object so if i had more than one object and don't worry i will show you how to do everything on the software i just don't want to tell you everything at once i will show you how to duplicate and everything in future videos. So to recenter the object, you first select your object and then you click recenter and it will go straight to that object and it will start revolving around that object. So notice that otherwise the camera is kind of revolving around uh, on a weird manner. But if you click the object and recenter, it's much more comfortable to work. And then we have this ruler uh, that when we click it, it will allow us to move the camera on a specific uh, amount of degrees at a time so it goes five degrees at a time so instead of going like this that you don't have a specific uh, number uh, you see that you can go more smoothly like one degree at a time here you can uh, lock your camera on specific angles and that's good if you need that then the next button along is the show view cube button so when you click it, it will just show or hide this cube that all it does is when you click with your left mouse button and you drag, you can move the camera and you can also click on the sides to go straight to that view. You can also click on the corners if you want like a 45 degree view. So if you don't use this and it annoys you because your screen is small or something, you can just hide it. So let's now talk about the other camera operations that you can do here that are kind of hidden under this arrow. If you click this arrow on the left, that says show camera control. And I mean in here, it says where it says hint hotkey. If you hover over anything, it will just tell you what it is. So this is the show camera control. So when you click it, you will have extra options for your camera. In here, you can do stuff like saving a camera. This panel here is to save a camera. So for instance, if I move the camera around, I like this position. I can just click the down button here that says save camera. When you click it, then when you move the camera around, if you click the other one, the load camera button, it will just go to that camera again. And let's say we want to save several cameras. If I press number one, I can save this camera now. And now I can just go to the old one and load it, go to number one and load it. And I can have several cameras. If you're working on a render and you are just adding more detail, you don't need to uh, remember these numbers. You can just save your camera. Other than that, you will find here just a bunch of slides. I invite you to move them around to see what they do. It's very intuitive. So you will see that they just move the camera with 
parametric values instead of you moving it with your mouse, right? So you can have like, you can remember specific values and there is something that you cannot do with your mouse as far as I'm aware, that is roll your camera to the side. So if you want to a render that is a bit uh, laying down, a bit tumbled to the side, you can choose, you can use this option and that's pretty much it. These options here, like the field of view will only do make a difference if you have uh, the perspective because this is about the camera field of view. So you can have something similar to an isometric render or something with a lot of distortion on the lens. So that will be for this lesson. I will keep these videos short so they are a bit uh, more fun to watch, more snack sized and I don't make like one, two hours uh, tutorials. So I hope you enjoy this format and let me know in the comments what do you think and what can I improve for future lessons and uh, because I am still recording these videos as you watch them. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking it so I can reach more people and see you in the next lesson.